it was a tough one to swallow when they released it. I think I thought they completely messed up the, the M3. My name is Jay Patel. I've got a 99 uh, M3 Dakar Yellow. The only thing that it has on it is uh, lowering springs and then, um, I mean, OEM Plus kind of mod just at LTW wheels. I'd like to just get it back to 100% almost factory condition. I'm more of an OEM Plus kind of uh, kind of guy. Uh, all my other cars, I kind of build them just a little bit lower, kind of nicer wheels, um, and, and that's about it. Maybe a front lip, but um, you know, performance aspect, um, there's not going to be much more for this this particular car. In the beginning, believe it or not, I was a Mercedes guy, um, just because of the power. At that time, I had a E55 AMG. Um, E55, still a special place in my heart. And uh, the thing that made me go to a BMW, I, I had a lot of buddies that were into BMWs, uh, a lot of them with E36s, uh, even E30 M3s, E46 M3s, and, and really, I think uh, the first time or what made me actually switch into uh, the BMW was uh, driving the E46 M3. And the E46 M3, after I drove it, it was absolutely amazing. Such a balanced car. Uh, not the fastest car out there, but I mean, perfect for uh, daily driving. And, and there's so many ways, that, again, you can go with that vehicle. Um, I, I drove E36 M3 after that and then the E30 M3, and there was nothing more to talk about after that. <laughs> I, I was hooked. The first cars that I started buying uh, actually were regular E36s, uh, just buying them, trying to fix them up and things like that. Um, really got into it uh, once I started, you know, buying three, four of them at a time. And uh, they were selling pretty quickly. So eventually moved up to, M to the M3s. And um, as of right now, I mean, own a small collection of them, uh, E36, E46, E92, so. As far as E36 stacking up against the others, they're all very different cars. I think BMW did a really good job of splitting up the generations and making each one uh, kind of its own. Um, I think the E36 itself, uh, if I had to pick out of the three of them, I'd probably put it right in the middle. Um, my E46, I, I think I, I enjoy driving daily, but the E36 just has a kind of special place for me, especially in this color. <laughs> Nothing is really like uh, driving these cars. Uh, and like I said, each one of them is, is different in its own way. It's, you really gotta drive them just to see. In the Orlando area, that's where uh, I actually came up from. Uh, a lot of cars and coffee meets. Um, and again, a lot of the newer BMWs and a lot of the newer M3s you'll see out there, the F80s, the G80s. You don't really see a lot of clean, still stock E36s. Um, you know, you'll see the occasional E30 M3 every once in a while. Um, and actually, a lot of the cars and coffees, I don't even see E46s anymore, which is kind of kind of crazy because uh, it's, it's one of those iconic designs that uh, I, I think is timeless. So the thing that surprised me probably the most on this car is how much other people actually like this car. Um, and, and it doesn't matter age group. It can be anyone from, you know, little kids running up to see it to, you know, older people that grew up during this generation, well, older people being me. <laughs> um, so uh, I, I think that's uh, that's one of the things that, that surprised me the most. I mean, even till this morning, I had the car in the trailer, went to go get gas and somebody actually pulled off the road, came by and asked me to take a picture of the car. It was kind of surreal. I, I don't really take the car out that much, but uh, I think I'm gonna have to now. <laughs> Through the BMW lineup, uh, E30 M3, I mean, caught my eye from the beginning, um, how wide the car is, I mean, for that generation. Like I said, I was a Mercedes guy before. The uh, the 190 E um, manuals, I mean, those those were some of the some of the best cars back then. And then when the E30 came out to kind of rival it, it was uh, it was a game changer. Um, BMW, I think, kind of took off from there. And then uh, going to the E36, I think they did a really good job. I think they did miss the mark on not making that car wider um, from the regular one. I, you know, every other M3 generation has been wider than the regular car. You can tell it coming down the road. But um, the E36, I think, I think uh, we did kind of kind of missed the mark on that one. Um, we didn't get the European motor, which it is what it is. But uh, the E46 going on from there, I think uh, timeless, iconic design. Uh, E92, I think, is going to be right behind it. I, th I think they did a really great job with that car. Um, last generation with the V8, or only generation with the V8. Um, the F80, I think, uh, design-wise, I think they did a really good job. Um, hit or miss on the motors, I mean, I know they're reliable overall, uh, but I don't know with the six-cylinder turbo if that was, uh, you know, the, the best move. But in the G80, when they moved to that, um, it, Overall, I hated the design on the G80 in the beginning. Um, I, it definitely grew on me though. Uh, definitely a car that I can see myself owning in the future. Um, but I think they did a better job with the uh, six turbo on the G80 for sure. Um, design cues, I mean, it, it it was a tough one to swallow when they released it. I think I thought they completely messed up the, the M3. Um, but as I started to see them more on the road, started seeing them at uh, cars and coffee and things like that, um, definitely grew on me and uh, definitely a nice car. I love the, uh, the color combinations that they come out with as well. Um, Definitely bold, definitely bold choice. 
You know what? I actually like that they uh, they differentiated them and, and kind of split it and made the M4. I think a lot of the manufacturers across the board are kind of doing that now. Um, Audi did A4 and A5 now, or S4, S5, RS. Um, Mercedes kind of did the same thing. They do uh, the GLE Coupe, the GLEs, uh, C-Classes, C-Class Coupes, and things like that. So they're kind of differentiating it. Um, I, I think it was a good move on their part to, to split them, though. Um, cause you know, you kind of get that, that sedan, um, from now on, you, you know, that you're getting a M3 sedan. So for a new BMW owner, uh, don't do it. It'll take all your money. Your wife will kill you. She, she'll hate every bit of it, but, um, you'll enjoy every piece of it as well. So, uh, it, it's really a balance. Um, you know, I, I think for new BMW owners, uh, definitely try it out, especially if you're into European vehicles. Um, I, I don't really think there's a more balanced brand straight out of the box. Uh, I, I think uh, they do a really good job um, with the with the M3, with really any of the lines, even if you're starting out with a non M3 car, um, you know, get a feel for it and uh, and you can always move up from there. I've worked with Aero Tuning previously. I've ordered uh, a few parts from them. Great pricing and, and quick shipping because they're right here in Florida. So, I mean, uh, either you can come pick it up or, you know, ship directly to the house. You can't really beat that. Good inventory. Thank you.